Viral Refinement. We have in the studio President of Far Paragon Foundation, Sheikh Al Hajj Nasruddin Ishaq. Mm -hmm. Sheikh, <laughs> you're welcome. Thanks a lot, my brother. How's the family? Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah. It's been a while, yeah, Sheikh. Mm -hmm. Sheikh, you're welcome. And Sheikh, we will kick off the discussion by asking mm -hmm. what is psychology, so to speak? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al anbiya amma ba'd. Not to give the academic definition of psychology, but to look at uh, psychology from beginning up till now. Uh, sometime ago, looking at what Aristotle and Co. Uh, said about psychology or their thinking about what psychology was, we can say that from beginning it was seen as the study of the soul. Then gradually it was turned to like the study of the mind rather. Then gradually rather the study of conscience or consciousness, then the, finally to the study of behavior. That is how come uh, Robert Woodward said that psychology, uh, you know, was seen to be the study of the soul. Okay. Then it finally lost that one. Then gradually it lost its mind. He put it that psychology first lost its soul. Then it lost its mind, then it lost its consciousness, and it has a behavior of a sort. Wow. What Robert Woodworth means by this one uh, is that at first, psychology was seen to be like the study of the soul, then gradually shifted to the study of the mind. Because up till now, even the Quran says that we have been given but a little of knowledge mm -hmm. concerning what the soul. Mm -hmm. So what the soul is, is not actually well known. So many people, you know, out of their research, they talk much about the soul and so mm -hmm. forth. So finally, psychology had to give up, you know, concerning the soul, but, and then shift to the study of the mind. Mm -hmm. Then finally, to, to the study of uh, consciousness. Then from there to the study of uh, behavior. And this is uh, this last definition, which actually concerns Islam a lot. And for all the other definitions, also, if you look at uh, the soul, Allah talked about the soul in the Quran, talked about the mind, more especially the activities of what the mind or how we are supposed to use the mind yes, in the sure. Quran. And then Allah talks about uh, consciousness in the Quran, being vigilant, aware. Uh, of our being conscious. I mean, the concept of taqwa itself mm. is built on divine consciousness. Mm. Then from there to behavior, which is very important. In fact, summary of the significance of behavior mm. in the language of Rasul is to makari mal akhlaq. You know, the essence of creation itself, why he was sent is, uh, is for him to come and perfect our behavior to come and complete what perfect morality uh, so that is to say that from this perspective psychology has a link to what islam or in fact uh, when we talk about fasting itself we can say the core purpose of it is to help us achieve taqwa as stated in the quran mm. and taqwa itself in the quran has certain features or component in the quran mm. In about 286 places, Allah talks about taqwa, the concept of taqwa. And uh, because the Quran is not an abstract book or is a book that is built on practicality, like behavior, I mean, it's not only giving theory. The Quran doesn't go direct to talk about the uh, academic definition or theoretical definition of taqwa, but then deals with taqwa from certain features of people who have taqwa. And when we group them, we see that even what we have in psychology, the building blocks of character, you find these things over there, pushing us to think that when we just talk about taqwa, we are talking about perfect character. About the people of taqwa, or the concept of taqwa in the Quran, Allah talks about their basic knowledge, the knowledge that they have in the Quran. Summarizing it to the belief the quality of belief and the con content of their belief itself. What is it? Then coming to the effect of the belief on their behavior and for that matter, daily what they do, their, their habit. Then from the habit, Allah crowns it with what? Character. 
the way it affects their character and their personality. So it means that everything, all the worship that we do, Allah summarizes it to the point that we are supposed to get taqwa out of it. When we, you ask any average Muslim, why, what is the purpose of creation? Why did Allah create us? Quickly, we quote Quran chapter 51 verse 56. And that Allah did not create mankind and he didn't create the jinn except that we should come and worship him. But beyond this one, to the psychological level, then we look at Quran chapter 2 verse 21 where Allah says that, Ya ayuhan nas, O mankind, you should worship your Lord. Alladhi khalakakum, the one who created you people, walladhina min qablikum, and those before you people. Why? That la'allakum tattakun, so that you might get what? Taqwa. Mm -hmm. And taqwa is nothing more than what? The behavior of the people of taqwa. The character of the people of taqwa. And that, you see, this is the reason. The divine reason for which we were created. And our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also says that he was sent to come and fulfill perfect character or perfect morality. Now, to summarize all that I'm trying to say, in order, you know, to create a platform for us to be able to continue our discussion is that Taqwa has certain key components. Mm. And the critical, most important of each component is being forgotten. From the academic level, the social level, mm. within the Muslim Ummah, mm. that particular component is forgotten. Mm. That is, Taqwa has the Iman component, mm. the, what do you call, the belief component, mm. how the, 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 the belief of the people of Taqwa should look like. Mm. Then Taqwa also has the behavioral component, you know, how we should behave, the normal habit of the person, how he should behave. Then taqwa has a character component. Mm. You know? And our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the character component of taqwa, akhlaq, mm. that will be the most heaviest thing on the scale on the day of judgment. Yeah. Meanwhile, that is the forgotten thing. Mm -hmm. Now, people are struggling with recitation of Quran. They are struggling with qiyam. They get up in the night, pray, recite Quran. They go for tafsirs and other... But for us to pause a bit and ask ourselves, mm. what kind of uh, uh, collaborative effect should these things have on my character mm -hmm. by the end of ramadan how should my character look like in other words my normal behaviors mm -hmm. my habit mm -hmm. the interaction interaction between i and my colleagues my social environment and my neighbors how should ramadan affect it mm -hmm. we don't think of it that way mm -hmm. but we tend to see ramadan to be the month of reward mm -hmm. where we are to struggle and get more reward mm -hmm. which is not wrong I, I mean, which is not wrong, but that is not the core purpose for what Ramadan. And then we also tend to see Ramadan to be uh, uh, the month of trying to do good deeds, plenty good deeds, which is true. That is not to say that after Ramadan we should drop them. When the companions are describing the character of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they say that he used to be the most generous among all the people of his time. And his generosity increased during the month of what? Ramadan. That doesn't mean that we should be generous only in the month. Now that is the, what is happening within the Muslim people are struggling to be. Somebody you even know will never do good. But in the month of Ramadan, he's struggling. We are pleading with them that they should struggle and convert these practices in the month of Ramadan into a character by the end of Ramadan, into a habit which should be a building block in their character. So whatever we are doing in this month of Ramadan, we should intend to continue it after the month of Ramadan, but not to intend to leave it aside, you know, when Ramadan... Did. And the worst of it is that some people will be in certain bad behaviors or bad characters. And they think that this is the month of Ramadan, and it's a holy month, and we don't have to exhibit that thing. So you see the ladies, uh, before the month of Ramadan, she is not well covered. But in the month of Ramadan, she struggles to get herself covered. And if she doesn't even do that, the community will remind her, don't you know that we're in the month of Ramadan? Why should you dress this way? So she will dress appropriately because of the month of Ramadan. 
I mean, just temporarily for the month of Ramadan. But after the month of Ramadan, I mean, she goes back to her old dresses. This can extend to even the relationship between uh, something like fornication and other distant corruption and so many other. All, all spheres of behaviors, sometimes we tend to say that this is the month of Ramadan. I'm investing. I want to get more reward. So I don't want to go into this bad behavior. After the month of Ramadan, then whatever is wrong in the month of Ramadan in Islam should be wrong forever. And whatever is good in the month of Ramadan mm. should be good forever. Mm. So the concept of some of our elders, somebody like uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, mm. he said, look, Allah didn't mention the night of Laylatul Qadr. Mm. And I am looking for it in the whole 360 something days. Mm. So every day to him is a potential Laylatul Qadr every night. Mm. And then he will accord it that respect mm. and the energy that he needs to put in, in the effort that he needs to put up in that particular night, he will do the same thing. So all his nights is equal, 300 days, because he's looking for what Laylatul Qadr. Mm. Why? Because this Ramadan is supposed to change us. So when we talk about the psychology of Ramadan in summary, we want to have a look at how can Ramadan have effect on our behavior? I mean, how should Ramadan change our behavior? How can Ramadan refine our behavior? The bad ones that are in our behavior, how can we use Ramadan to take them, pick them one by one and throw them away? And the good ones too, how can we acquire them? Basically, this is what uh, we say uh, when we mean by the psychology of Ramadan. That is the psychological effect of Ramadan on us or on humanity. And then... That is to also say that uh, the effect of Ramadan on our behavior, on our character, and finally our personality. Inshallah. Yeah, Sheikh, you mentioned a point that struck me, mm -hmm. the character component of taqwa mm -hmm. or piety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sheikh, some people have reduced Islam to rituals. Ritual, yes. We defraud each other, mm -hmm. we backbite, mm -hmm. we take away each other's wives, mm -hmm. We, we maltreat orphans. Mm. So, yeah, Sheikh, historically, is it the methodology of Dawa mm. that has reduced? Oh, the testimony we will give about a true Muslim is that, oh, we meet him in the mosque all the time. Mm. But there are people who are doing really bad things, but mm. they still go to the mosque. Mm. So, Sheikh, where is the disconnect? And what is the source mm. of that disconnect in your expatiation mm. of Atakwa or mm. piety? You see, uh, normally you call me Sheikh and want to run away from that because I'm not an Islamic scholar, you know, by training, I'm just a normal uh, pharmacist. But what I've observed is that the function of a Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam itself, most of our ulamas haven't understood it. It's gone to some extent that is even affecting our educational system. And this one, uh, I don't want to say that in an attempt to copy the Western uh, culture or to copy the educational system, the Western educational system, uh, we lost certain key virtues and certain key values. Now, basically, when we look at the functions of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Prophet Ibrahim Alayhi Salam was praying to Allah, you know, for such the emergence of such a personality, he qualifies him with certain functions. Rabbana wa ba'as fihim rasoolam minhum yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yu'allimhum al-kitaba wal-hikma. Then he says what? Wa yuzakihim. So this particular aspect, wa yuzakihim, is, is mission. Missing completely in our educational system. Prophet Ibrahim prays to Allah Azza wa Jal to bring a prophet like, to, uh, 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 to bring a prophet like, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and what is he supposed to do? He's supposed to recite the Quran to the people. He's supposed to teach them the Quran. He's supposed to also teach them wisdom. I mean, from the Quran, and he's also to help them refine themselves. Tazkiyah. Mm -hmm. I get one of them. Tazkiyah. Mm -hmm. Now, this tazkiyah component, mm -hmm. our ulama sees their duty to be the imp like to. To, to, to get people well informed and enlightened. They are just to transfer information mm. or to give them knowledge. Mm. But after the knowledge, the wisdom in the knowledge, mm. you know, to perfect the talent, skills, and profesh, profesh, uh, 
professional aspect of the knowledge, they think very less about that one. Then finally, also the character, which is built on Tezkia, refining their character, removing... When we talk about Tezkia, the concept of Tezkia itself in the Quran, is like removing the bad aspect of our character. You know, kad aflaha man zakaha. Going back to the in Surah Al Shams, uh, that so the fujur aspect of the soul, Allah has built the soul in a perfect manner, but has given the soul certain basic, uh, uh, basic capabilities or basic uh, 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 information or basic inspirations to be able to incline towards what is bad. And also to be able to incline towards what what is good. So the struggle to get the soul completely forget about the negative inclination mm. and bring it to the positive inclination mm. is what we call what tezkia. That is the way the Quran defines tezkia. Kad aflaha man zakaha. You know that is struggling to remove the fujur, the bad aspect of the soul, which our ulama they don't even see that one to be their duty. They see their duty to be, I mean, teaching the children the Quran. Fine, our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did that one. Teach them wisdom, bring the Quran and the Hadith together, form something like fiqh, which is a, a, a product of wisdom. So they teach them what the fiqh, which is also what good. But our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't end that one. Then he say, at the end of it all, we use a key him. He purified them. So this one completely is forgotten. Mm. And we are striving hard to get what the knowledge. So the shift is toward, I mean, even Ghana here, that is the way it is. When the Malam preaches mm. and he can quote so many verses. Then we say he's he, knowledgeable. He's knowledgeable. And but, maybe this <clears throat> Malam has a very bad character. <laughs> Good. And then, you see, instead of us to ask ourselves that what he has preached about, what impact is it having on our character? How can it change me? They don't ask that one. What is the number of hadith, the number of Quran, mashallah, he quotes, he quotes, he quotes. Then they are so, the information aspect is, seems, seems to be hypened. But then the transformation aspect mm. is relegated to the floor. Nobody is even thinking mm. about that mm. one at all. Mm. And what you said is also very, very practically true. When we are going to define somebody with taqwa, like a mutaqi from our own environment, we look at the rituals. I mean, the, 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 the practices, the rituals, but not the conversion of the rituals into character. Mm. So somebody who always sits in the mosque, then that person is very religious. Somebody who completes the Quran in three days or four days, mm. who can enter into halwa, lock himself in a room, and then be there for 30 days, we say, Masha Allah. Who does plenty zikr, we say, Masha Allah. The ritual aspect is what we look at. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, if this ritual aspect has no impact on our character, mm -hmm. I don't want to mm -hmm. say it's useless, but I'll quote one hadith of our, our mm -hmm. Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam, looking at fasting, fasting itself, the essence is also to polish up our character, to let us get the character of the people of taqwa. That is the essence of fasting, to get taqwa. It's not to get reward. I'm not saying we are not looking for reward. We are looking for reward in the month of Ramadan. But the reward is supposed to motivate us to stabilize that good character. The generosity character, the mercy character, the kindness character that we have. Allah is promoting it in this month. So that we can practice, practice, practice. One of the key pillars of building a habit or breaking a habit the four laws of uh, habit breaking or building a habit, according to William James, one of them he says is cut a distant practice. The more you practice the thing, then the more you stabilize that thing as a habit and consequently get it converted into what a character. So Ramadan is supposed to help us, I mean, practice more so that this practice, this uh, ritual practices can be turned into behavior. You know, then from the behavior, it will be uh, converted into habit and then finally our character. That is, we cannot live. People will define us by those particular behaviors or by those particular, you know, manners. So, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, looking at fasting, he tells us that, Man lam yada'aqawla dhuri wal amala bihi fa laysa lillahi khajatun fi an yada'a ta'amuhu wa sharabahu. That whoever does not live, you know, ill talks, false talk, and lies 
and building his behavior and character on it, then Allah, the, his fasting, his stopping drinking and eating is of no use to Allah. Mm -hmm. That is, it means that more or less trying to tell us that we don't have fasting. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the behavior. That's how come Imam Ghazali, he classified the types of fasting mm -hmm. based on what aspect of our humanity is fasting. Is it only our mouth? And then our private part that is fasting or our character and behavior is also fasting. Then one other clear hadith to buttress this one is also on salah. Rasulullah says that Man lam tanahahu salatuhu anil fa'ashai wal munkar falah salatelahu. I mean from the definition of fiqh, we have a way to be able to define your salah mm -hmm. and say your salah is good. I mean you perform your abusing. Yeah, Sheikh, we, we fight over whether it should what? be this, it should be that. <laughs> we should have been fighting over the character. I mean, I pray every day, but why do I still tell lies? I fast every year, but I still go back to my fornication. I have my wife, and I still go back to adultery. Or, I mean, people see me to be a decent Muslim, but I have some bad, you know, uh, uh, habits that I'm still into. Meanwhile, I fast. There is no difference between my last year character and my today's character, or this year character. Then it's, there's a big question mark. More or less, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is trying to tell us that we have not been one successful. So the big question is that, how can we use this fasting to change our character? That's one thing. Any bad habit that we have, any bad character that we have, how can we use this one to change it? Now, basically, I would want to enumerate certain key tools that are very, very important you know, and very effective uh, in building a good habit. And then in breaking a, a, a bad, bad habit. habit. But in Takwa, when we are looking at the developmental stages, the first stage is for us to distance ourselves from what the bad habit. That is breaking of what the bad habit. That's the first thing. Before we like you distance yourself from disobedience before we talk about what obedience. Are you getting one? Uh -huh. So uh, but the tools I'm going to mention, they are effective tools for both. For both obedience and what? Disobedience. Mm -hmm. But if there's more time and we are to continue, then we look at the disobedience aspect fact. That is, if I have a bad habit before Ramadan, and I'm in Ramadan now, and I want to use Ramadan to actually refine myself, refine my behavior, mm -hmm. and then break these bad habits, how can I do it? What tools do I need to be able to do that one? Now, one of the tools which is the most effective and the most important one, that is the tool that Ramadan is going to help us acquire that particular tool. And when I get to that tool, I'll, but like chronologically and looking at their sources, I want to start from general, then I come to internal, the tools that we should have within us. Then the tools that are outside that we need to use the internal one to acquire them. For our success in this world and the hereafter, Allah has already said in the Quran that You can count. I mean, the blessings that Allah has given to us in order for us to succeed, if we want to count, we can't stop counting them. All that we need to succeed, Allah has given it to us. That's how come, as a Muslim, anytime you stand in front of Allah, Allah wants you to say Alhamdulillah first before you can take any step. So we have everything. Only that there is something that is blocking us from discovering them and making use of them on gratefulness mm -hmm. and disbelief. So these two things, I mean, zulum and kufr, I mean, you know, ungratefulness, cheating others, oppressing others, disbelieving even the existence of it doesn't open our eye for us to see all those. Now, resource number one is time. And Allah has given us time. And he's given everybody equal amount of time, rich or poor, king or, you know, slave, leader or follower. Everybody has equal amount of what time. It's a basic resource. Mm -hmm. And it has key link to success and failure. In fact, I say it's the mother of success and the mother of what? Failure. Mm. So success and failure is linked to what? Time. 
to the extent that Allah sways by it and take it to make it a subject matter of a full chapter in the Quran. That would have even sufficed as to live our life without any divine guidance, according to Imam Shafi'i, if that one alone mm. were to be given to Rasulullah al Asr. Mm -hmm. Just talking about what time. So time is very important. I mean, when, if there is no time, we don't even talk about character building. And we don't talk about breaking a bad character or breaking a bad. If somebody is dead and there is no more time, we don't talk about refining his character. So time is number one. Then number two is also our intellectual ability, our mind, which even William James also mentions that one, determination. I mean, our mind is a resource that Allah has given to us. Out of that one, we need to get an intellectual power and energy that we call determination. You know, first we should build the awareness, the mind should uh, 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 nurture awareness. Mm -hmm. It should push it from that awareness to have actually, to be able to visualize and have a goal and a target mm -hmm. and for that matter, give birth to determination, mm -hmm. you know, to take a step, mm -hmm. you know. So our mind is a key resource, very, very important. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing is because sometimes we might be aware and we might know that this uh, bad deed is bad and we want to break it, but then we don't have the desire. The desire is not there. So the heart is very important. Mm. The center of our desire or center of emotion, our heart is very important. We might be aware of the fact that something is bad, but once we don't have the desire, the requisite desire to take the step, I mean, uh, it becomes very difficult for us to break that habit or to build another habit. So from determination, which comes from the mind, we also need what? Desire and passion, which come from what? The heart. After that one is not finished. Mm -hmm. We might be aware of something. I mean, the mind gives us that awareness. It gives us that determination to be able to, uh, to, to, to wish to do that thing That's or true. to guide us to do it. And we might also have the requisite desire. We've internalized it. We want to really do it, so we have the passion to do that one. But we might lack willpower to be able, you know, to do that one, which comes from the soul, the willpower to be able to do. So our elders will say, Sun Sun Pe Na Honam Ede Emere. I mean, you, you, you want to do it, but you don't have the willpower mm. to be able to do that. Okay. So willpower is so important. It's yeah, a yeah Sheik, and on this willpower note, um, Sheikh has a lot of expectation to do. He's explaining mm -hmm. the things we need to know about the psychology of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. But intermittently, we'll be taking calls. And so we officially open the phone lines. Um, the phone line is boldly displayed on your set. You may call in to do an intervention or ask Sheikh any question you have. Yeah, yeah Sheikh. So on this power. one, the soul, the soul itself, Ramadan comes in to train the soul, which I'm, I'm, like the soul is, uh, our character and personality is built on the soul. Mm. And that is how, what Allah says, Qad aflah man zakaha, wa qad khaba man dasaha. Successful indeed is the one who strives to what, purify the soul. Mm. And failure indeed is the one who... So Ramadan or fasting is supposed to help us train the willpower or train the soul so that we can get a strong irada willpower we can get what we call self-regulation we'll be able to regulate ourselves mm. what we know sometimes we have an ideal life and we have a life that we live mm. in between what we live in our ideal life actually lies the function of our willpower i mean we i want to become half us and i have the desire to become what half us so i want to memorize the quran and i know how to read the quran but my willpower I don't have that irada to discipline myself and say, let him sit down, let him be able to do it. So Ramadan is to help us to be able to do what? Do that. In training the willpower or in training the soul, mm -hmm. there are certain critical things that we should be very mindful of yes, that our elders, you know, advised us. And that's, look, if we're able to deal with the soul, in fact, it becomes, Satan comes to rest through our soul. Satan tries to convince the soul or convince the nafs to uh, get us do certain things that are what? Bad. But if we're able to block Satan from entering into us, which Rasulullah says that Satan passes through our... It, Satan has a vein mm. 
or a path of passing into rest. Yeah. And it is Ramadan or it is fasting that blocks Satan from entering into rest. So he says that the yiku majari shaitan bil ju'i wal atash. That is block the path of Satan from entering into you with hunger in test mm -hmm. now if we don't eat too much if you reduce the amount of food that we eat mm. then we empower the mind mm. the mind become alert we empower we conscientize the heart mm. the heart also becomes alert mm. against the negative inspirations of what the soul so to weaken the soul we need to reduce the amount of food that we eat and that is what ramadan is helping us what to do now there are certain things that the soul likes a lot with abstinence, saying you won't do those things, reducing those things, then you weaken what the Thanks, soul. Sorry, I'll be cutting in from time to time. Hello, salamu alaikum. Your name and where you calling us from? Hello. Hello. Okay, sorry, the line dropped. Uh, you may call us, and the number to call us on is boldly displayed on your set. Namia Sheikh. Yeah. So you see. To actually discipline the soul, quickly let me just enumerate them. I think I have to stop the explanations and just be giving the outline. Less sleep, less talking, less eating, and then also... Okay, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum. Assalamu Your name and where are you calling us from, bro? I'm calling from Ibarra. Nungwa in Accra. I'm from Ibarra. Okay, well, okay well, from Wa. Welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome, Madam Eva. Uh, yes, I want to thank you for, for the wonderful job that you're doing mm. in, the, in the Islamic community. So, in this Ramadan, we are asking Allah to serve his life and the rest of us to follow the the, the real guidance that we have been able to do more so on the field. Amen. So Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for getting in touch. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. So less sleep, less talking, less eating. And in place of this less eating, we can fast. In place of less talking, we can do more as cars. You know, we can read the Quran. We can engage ourselves in beneficial talks to benefit others and benefit ourselves. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Yeah, please put off your TV set and we can still hear you. Hello. Uh, is your TV set off? Yes. Okay, we can hear you. Your name and where are you calling us from? I'm Ali calling from Wale Wale. Okay, welcome to the show. Thank you. I, I just want to ask a uh, question. Okay. Uh, when, when you fast and maybe you then you do uh, an illegal connection. Electricity. <laughs> okay, thank you for the question, Sheikh. You were talking about character, so he's fasting all right, he's doing all the prayers, and then he's treating the state. Yeah, he's treating the state. I mean, it, it, it means the Ramadan is not helping him. You know. he, he's acquiring reward. Even you maybe because the, the Tarawih the is, tarawi is with that. Yeah, even yeah, the connection, see. the AC is from illegal connection. You are praying Tarawih or Tarawih. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. So, you see, this is what if they Shaky, can. Let's lump that up with help. this one. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Abu, Abu Bakar. Calling from? Yes. Um, I'm very grateful for. Uh, you are calling us from where? You are giving us this evening. Yeah, my question is that uh, okay. should one decide to have the Holy Quran? How is it will it be and what are the steps that we can use in appreciating the Quran? Okay, Sheikh will tackle that question. Thank you so much for All calling. Right. Mm. Sheikh, will you finish the ECG one before you tackle? <laughs> As for e ECG one, it goes a long way to actually remind us also about that misconception that uh, I talked about. People are concentrating on reward 
forgetting about the character aspect. The reward is supposed to boost our morals and give us the motivation to be able to strive hard and acquire that particular character and refine our character. So even tapping illegally, you should know that it is what haram. Sorry, okay. Sheikh. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Your name and where are you calling us from? Yeah. My name is Mahmoud. I'm calling from Bolga. Bolga Tanga. Welcome, Mahmoud. Wa alaikum as My name is Mahmoud. I'm calling from Bolga. Welcome. Uh, say, I want to, I want to, I want to know. You're talking about the Quran. Quran. What of you? Oh, sorry. Your line went bad in the last few seconds. Can you repeat your question? Okay, sorry, you may have to try again. Okay, so as for the ECG guy, in fact, it's a bad, something very <laughs> bad, they just have to but stop. Sheikh, do you know it's so widespread? So they, then it means that they, they, they have to start thinking. I mean, if we had continued, one of the tools would have been istikfar. I mean, seeking supplication, you know, seeking forgiveness. So over there, you, you get the opportunity to refine, check your behavior, introspect yourself to know the bad things that you are doing, and then seek for repentance. Behavioral repentance, of course, not only maybe verbal repentance, but you denouncing that, making sure that you stay away from it. But quickly to the guy who asked about the memorization, memorization of, of the, the Quran. Quran. There's another misconception too over there. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa memorized the whole of the Quran in about 20 or 23 years. And none of the companions memorized less than what that. I mean, because it was revealed gradually. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we are talking about textual memorization, mm -hmm. just memorizing the text, that mm -hmm. one is different. Sayyidina Usman radiallahu anhu said they used to go to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa He would give them some few verses. Let them go and memorize and apply in their life. So it's so about acting upon what acting you learn, not having child I mean, information. So you, you might not be able to memorize the whole of the Quran textually, but you can memorize it behavioral, uh, character-wise. And that is the most important memorizer, because Nana Aisha radiallahu anh tells us that when you, uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the walking Quran, so it means that his character, his behavior, everything was what? The Quran. It doesn't mean that he was reciting Quran always wherever he was. But then his character... If, if Quran is talking about cleanliness, everything of his is what? Clean. If he's talking about justice, when he's going to talk, everything is based on what? Justice. So let's concentrate on that. And that is the most important thing. The textual one, if we're able to do, fine. That is very nice. I mean, if we're not able to do, the first thing to do is the character one. Memorize the Quran based on character. Mm -hmm. Behavioral memorization. And ensure our children memorize it. You know, the, the, the textual memorization and follow it up in adulthood with what? Character, what? Memorization, which is very important. Now, going back to our topic, if we get some calls, you can still pick. Okay. But going back to the topic, I was counting the resources and I came to what? The soul. The most because the soul seem to be like all the other ones. You know, uh, Professor Adam Ergul says that there are about six things that affect the heart. Which is the center? In fact, on the day of judgment, what Allah is going to look at is the earth. Illa man Allah bin salim. Mm. That is, Allah is going to look at our heart, and whoever comes with a clean heart is the one that Allah is going to accept. Not be a clean salim, not with what wow. clean what mind. Wow. And th there are certain things that affect what the heart. And key among them, the negative one, key among them is the soul. It drives the heart, the desire of the heart. It drives it towards a negative what direction. Allah has, uh, Allah gives a certain natural desires, instinct within us in our heart, and He has given us the positive way of achieving those desires or acquiring those desires, a negative way of what acquiring what those desires, and the soul will always push us to the negative way of what acquiring those desires. You want to acquire wealth. Fine, it's a good desire, but Allah has a way that you should work hard and get it. And then the soul also has a way, the shortcut, you know, corruption and other distance, stealing, arm robbery, pen robbery, and so forth and so on. So being able to actually detain the soul and discipline it and let it remain at the middle or even move to the right side is the reason for which we are what? Fasting. And I'm saying that psychologically, if you look at way of training the soul, 
the more we are able to detain the soul from executing. In psychology, we say delay of gratification. The more you are able to delay what the soul wants, your desire wants, then gradually you are, you, you are controlling, you are gaining control over the soul. The soul wants food. And we say, no, from morning up to what evening, I'm not going to give you the food. It will constantly be pushing you to eat. The soul wants sex. And from morning to evening, then you are saying no. You are denying the soul. That is, you are delaying the gratification. You are delaying it. And in the course of delaying it, you gain control over what? The soul. Allah Azza wa Jal specifically chose these two instincts because they are actually holding humanity. These two instincts. The instinct of lust trying to have the opposite sex, delay it, cut it, and the instinct of food, to eat and drink, delay it or cut it, these are the two instincts that is actually controlling our civilization. If you and I cease not to eat for some number of days, maximum I will say one year all of us will die and go. There will not be humanity at all. So it means one key pillar. And Abraham Maslow, in his uh, theory of motivation, you realize that at the basis, the basic level, food, he put physiology, food, food, food shelter, and our physiological food. needs. That's what, the, and that is the physiological needs, the basis that fasting is trying to control. Fasting is trying to refine. Mm. If we're able to refine that one, then the rest. If you look at the pyramid that Abraham Maslow drew, the basis. Once you take Very care of wide. it, then the rest will have what good this thing so our last or our desire for sex we are using fasting to control it mm. and our desire for eating mm. and drinking we are using fasting to control it yeah, what sure. do we need out of this one mm. all that we need out of this one is a strong will a strong will to be able to control our life what we see as good that is in our ideal life we are able to move towards that one and leave the wrong one. You know very well that you are just seated down from morning up to afternoon. You are talking about football, which you know is not your ideal life. It's not going to contribute to the achievement of your vision in life. That's not your ideal or the way you want to achieve it. But your soul is forcing you. You are getting some kind of temporal leisure or temporal enjoyment. feelings or uh, enjoyment. So you are seated over there. I mean, somebody's sister, because of the temporal enjoyment, you put her on the bed. Somebody's distant. Meanwhile, you know, if it is done to you, you wouldn't be happy. You are going to ruin her whole life. After marriage, she would be thinking about this and she would never be happy with her husband. We are going to rent the whole of these things, but because your soul wants, you are going to that place. So Ramadan is supposed to help us to be able to control this particular distance. In fact, abstinence to be able to control the soul, even in Salah, those things that the soul needs, Allah wants us to stay away from it. Stay away from drinking, stay away from eating, Stay away from talking. These are basic things that the soul actually always wants to what? push us into it. Stay away from them in Salah. So temporary, if you look at Ramadan or the concept of Saum in Islam, it's as if every day we fast five, day, five times in a day, but we don't know. You know, Zuhur, you stand up for the five minutes or ten minutes that we pray. You can eat, you can drink, you can talk, you can do. In fact, even that one is, is more comprehensive than the normal fasting that we are doing. Then Asar, you repeat the same thing. Maghrib. All of this abstinence is supposed to actually strengthen your willpower to be able to tell the soul, no, this is wrong, I won't do. To be able to do so if our ramadan when we are fasting and then doing so many good things and reciting the quran and we don't pause a little bit to ask ourselves that look today what has my fasting been able to strengthen within me for me to be able to say no i mean the time i spend on whatsapp those bad images that i look on social media i want to say no i won't look at it but then my soul is pushing me to that one has this my today Ramadan been able to strengthen my willpower so that I will now be able to say, no, I won't do this thing? Or has been able to strengthen my willpower for me to stand up and say, no, I have to read Quran this night. I have to stand on my feet for long and do tahajjud. I don't need to only do it only in the mosque. Oh, sorry, Ashik. Hello, salam alaikum. Hello, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, uh, uh, sister. Your name and where are you calling us from? My name is Kumi. I'm calling from Modern Region. 
Tamale. Okay, welcome. Uh, Sheikh, okay. Is from, Sheikh is from Tamale. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. You can make your point. Hello. You can make your point. Yes, please do. I'm ready. And this person, I'm ready for about uh, can you reposition yourself? Uh, hello, um, my, uh, can you reposition yourself a bit so we can hear you? Okay, hello. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. That's what I'm asking. Okay, okay. Shake. She started fasting maybe mm. from 4.30 a.m. at mm. dawn, sometime around 1 or 2, mm. or even 4 or 5. Then she experiences her menses. Mm. What, what, what should she do? <laughs> now we want to, you see, most questions concerning, you know, especially Fika, I don't want to go into that <laughs> yeah, one. I want us to <laughs> remain on the behavior, you know, uh, aspect yes, or the yeah, character, the yeah, uh, aspect. Yeah, but if I were to be in her shoe, yes. I mean, uh, you would just for the respect, eat. for the respect of the distance, the Ramadan month it. of Ramadan, you complete. But after Ramadan, you, you repeat pay that. It. So you, you are pay it. for that yeah, one. I mean, you. But, but some ulama will also tell you, and, and you are free to. It has broken your fast because medicine breaks your fast, so completely you are free to do it. But for the respect for the month, I mean, you you complete it. But after Ramadan too, you pay it back. Shaykh, we Ramadan. have yeah. um, yeah. only seven minutes to go, yeah. and then you are a man of many words. So let's see how you can condense your thoughts. But then um, there there is this question about wholesome use of the internet. You mentioned WhatsApp. We are on social media all the time. Mm -hmm. Would you advise a fasting person this Ramadan to desist entirely? Or you should be disciplined while you are online and offline as well? Mm -hmm. uh, being disciplined is the point. That is the main thing because uh, it has some benefits. And in fact, for us to see that WhatsApp is oh, haram. Shaykh, let's take this call. Hello, Salaam Alaikum. Your name and where you calling from, brother? I will from offense, so me patch you too. Ah, because Yo, yeah, that's it. Yo, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sheikh, would you want to uh, tackle it? Or? All these are fake questions. Okay, so I think okay. just even the ulamas within their environment, they can help them, inshallah. Okay, let me uh, say, but, Sheikh, say, okay, Sheikh. It's, it's, it's a supplicatory prayer. So you it's know, not compulsory. Uh, so the rules are not as I mean, stringent as... stringent as, as uh, our normal fard or obligatory ones. If Salaam. you wish to speak. Wa alaikum salam. Your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Achimoda. My name is Fusena. Fusena from Achimoda. You're welcome. And uh, Hosaina, put off your TV yes. set and we can still hear oh, you. Please, I want to ask you something. Please do. If you do it twice, can you make a fasting or You mean when when you produce TS? Or did she say cesarean section? C S. Okay. Okay. C S. I mean. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Sheikh, mm -hmm. when you are in labor and you 
You are going to the theater to give birth. Mm -hmm. uh, what, should you still fast? You don't oh, even no, no, fast. No, 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 no. It's, not it's, to it's, talk it's of difficult. going through yes, surgery. Yes, yeah. So it's, it's difficult. But uh, some of these things, we just say medically, okay. you know, the doctor should determine. Okay. You know, but it's obvious. Going to labor, the pains that she will pass through it. And then the, it's difficult at that moment. They themselves, you know, they know. So normally a well-qualified, you know, doctor who is also a Muslim and knows the significance of fasting should determine these things. Okay. But Allah completely uh, makes it clear to us that he doesn't want us to be in difficulty mm -hmm. or anything at all that will affect us mm -hmm. in a negative way. Allah mm -hmm. doesn't want it. So to that extent you know, or to that level, okay. if, you know, the Shaykh, doctor please, advises let's take this other caller. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Your name and where you calling us from? My name is Elias Tamporufa. I'm calling from Kofodia. Uh, Elias from Koftan. Welcome to the show. And put off your TV set yeah. or lower the volume and we can still hear you. Okay, Elias, you can make your point. Oh, okay. Uh, my question is I want to know at what age yeah, at what age to your child, you start training your child to learn how to father. Okay, mm. thank you so much. Okay, all right. Yeah, I think uh, the questions have piled up, <laughs> so maybe we start from the recent to what. Okay, the so <laughs> um, should we put a hold on the call yeah, so you yeah. can so talk? Because you said that okay. it's left yes, only. Yes, yes, okay, shake. Okay, so, shake. with respect to the WhatsApp, it depends on the individual. Generally, we are supposed to discipline ourselves whether in fasting or outside fasting. It shouldn't unnecessarily take away our time. And the scenes over there too shouldn't unnecessarily also be something that is promiscuous, uh, like something that is bad for us to look at the aura or the private parts of artists and so forth and so on. And more especially the extravagance with uh, respect to time. You know, time is one of the most important resources that Allah Azza wa has given to us. We just use them by heart on the WhatsApp. So I will conclude on the, the social media issue or WhatsApp to say that it depends on the individual. Some of the individuals, we can go to the extent to say it should be haram to them. And some too, it should be something like makuru. And some is gotten to the extent like it's like fard. I mean, he has to look at it to do certain things that has immense effect on other people's what life so he's using it as a tool of service you know to also help others so we critically have to sit down and look at uh, that one and i think the next thing that uh, somebody asked the last one uh, uh, the at what age at what age you know from beginning i mean from somewhere like four or five years yes. you don't force the person to fast but let the person know the significance of fasting, ranging from the time you get up for sahur and the way you break your fast, you know, together. Then slowly, slowly, you let the person practice, you know, from morning up to, let's say, lunch, uh, like uh, skipping the uh, snaps. You skip them, uh, the snacks. They will skip the snack and then go to maybe lunch. From lunch to evening time to they skip the snacks in between and go to what supper slowly, slowly. Until at least when the person gets to seven, we should be training the person to try to do full. If not full, up to three o'clock, up to four, slowly, slowly. But as soon as the person gets to ten, we have to, I mean, try to encourage them. I mean, over there too, it's still not compulsory. Mm. But we still have to encourage them, mm. let them do in the month of Ramadan, get some number of days in the month of Ramadan. Mm. Then as soon as the person becomes an adolescent, then it means that the person will have to do it compulsory. Mm. Inshallah. Yeah, Sheikh, in conclusion, and you have yeah. about 10 minutes or mm. so, yeah. how would you encapsulate all that you yeah. said in, about in, the psychology of Ramadan? Yeah. In conclusion, I will urge all our brothers that these resources that I've mentioned, I've not finished mentioning them, but especially on the soul, to be able to train the soul well. All them, even because I don't know, within this Ramadan, whether we'll get time to come again. No, yeah, or not. Bad, I assure you, you got to come back, <laughs> inshallah. You know, every yes. bad habit, or good habit Inshallah. or good character they have four basic pillars now the tools that i was mentioning you use these basic tools 
to break the pillars that I am going to mention. Yeah, sure. And this we will reserve that. We don't want a situation where you, you give us the appetite mm -hmm. and you don't get the opportunity to explain everything. Mm -hmm. So we'll take that as a full topic mm -hmm. and how to break away the drinks mm -hmm. of bad behavior mm -hmm. so that you tackle those. Mm -hmm. And Sheikh, thank you so much for coming. Thanks a lot. Uh, Thanks a lot. We've been in the studios with uh, President of Paragon Foundation. Uh, he's a trained pharmacist and he has done great investments in the area of education in Accra, Kumasi and elsewhere. Uh, and then he's playing a very important role in the construction of the National Mosque um, around Kanda here in Accra. Uh, Al-Hajj uh, Sheikh Abdul Nasruddin. And uh, we've come yet again to the end of another edition of Ramadan Caravan. So we come your way tomorrow, inshallah. And stay blessed. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa You lift me up high. You spread my ways and fly me to the sky. I feel so alive. It's like